Hello everyone and all aboard at Leeton Junction. This is uh, Leeton Junior back to uh, bore you walls as per usual. So uh, for this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to be fitting a Locksound version 5 chip and uh, XB speaker, one of the big ones, one of the ones from Roman Mills, uh, into this class Intercity 125. And it's the Intercity 125 and it's the W4302. And I remember these from when I was a kid. As I said, I'm not other videos. These are the original ones that I remember seeing when we used to go on trips and stuff. And I used to see them at the station. It used to be like, oh, get in. Going on the 125. 125 miles an hour for the winner. And, uh, you know, I used to love, like, you know, little D trips and that that we used to go on. So anyway, what I've done is with this engine, I'm just quickly going to show you uh, the easiest way to get 125 apart. Now, this one had screws in it. It's a Hornby model, and it had screws in the bottom of it. So I unscrewed it and I thought, all oh, right, so it'll just fall out, which normal engines do. When you unscrew them, they just fall out. But with the 125s, especially the Hornby ones, you have to unclip it. Now, the secret to doing it is, if you're gonna do an engine, like for your very first time, take it apart, you know, put a speaker, whatever in it, uh, the best way to do it is take the screws out and use these plectrums. I got mine with my iFixit kit, which I use for like doing computer stuff with graphics cards, whatever, what have you. And with the 125 engine, at the back here is where you unclip it and it slides out from the front. So if you quickly just watch here, if we just get there at the back, if you can see, and then just underneath the back there, there's like a little lip, and you basically just gotta get in there, and then that'll drop down the 125 body chassis, and then just gently give it a pull, and there you go. And then slide it forward from the front, so slide it forward, and then it just pulls off. Now, as you can see on the inside of the engine, it's pretty sparse. But, you know, you, it's a Hornby engine, but it's one of the older ones. And it is pretty sparse. I mean, there's your circuit board there. Obviously, there's where the chip goes. Uh, which is obviously this Loxon version 5 chip. But it's got, obviously, the 8-pin connector on it there. Uh, so, for this engine, uh, specifically... If you've got an older version of the Intercity, on the inside of it, you get all this plastic junk, which you don't need. Now, beforehand, before, I didn't have enough room to fit the speaker in and the chip. But now I do. And what I did was, on this part here, there was two plastic lugs, which I like to, obviously, give it maybe some steadiness. And what I've done is, on here... I've cut the plastic lug out and then on there, now the XB speaker which I have here fits perfectly with the body chassis on and then I'm going to stick the chip itself on the inside just at the front there where the driver's cab is, at the front where the driver's cab is. And I'm going to stick it just there. And then what I'll do is I'll tidy those wires up in a moment. And I've got this to stick in. So I'll stick it in there. If I've got it the right way, that is. Bear with me a moment. So stick it into here where the driver's cab is. And then obviously, as you can see, you can't see it. You know, maybe like if you like got a magnifying glass and went dead close. And it sits perfectly there. So, and then I've got my two brown wires here to go onto the speaker. And obviously this here, which will go onto the chip. So the first thing is I'm going to take off the e pin connector. Now, I, I'm pretty used to doing this by now, so I can do this by hand. So if you just excuse me hands for a moment. Oh, there you go. There's the 8 pin off. And as you can see... There's your eight pin connector there. So obviously, as I said, get your pin, 
y uh, sorry, Yeti pin connector. Line it up with that. And then put your chip, attach your chip onto the 8-pin connector like so. And job done. And that's it, nice on, nice and tight. So that's the first part of the job done. The next part of the job is connecting the speaker together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna untie this from around these wires here, which I'm gonna hide in the body shell in a moment. So if you just bear with me, hands in the way for a second. So pull that out, put it away from those wires. And then I shall do my next part. So bear with me. I know I have my hands in the way. So there you go. So there's my two brown wires that are going to be going to the speaker have been already stripped, which Alan did for me before, because obviously I have like I have arthritis in my fingers and I find things like that very, very difficult. So as you can see there, that's my first speaker wire there. That I'm gonna be attaching to the red speaker wire here. So if I just pull that red speaker wire up here. So I'll do the red one first. So I'll get it into me helping hands. Sorry about this, you'll have to excuse me hands for a moment. And then I'll put it into me helping hands there just to keep it in place while I'm soldering it. And uh, as you can see, I mean, with all the speakers that you get from Olden Mails, it is pretty nicely soldered together, you know, and the, uh, the uh, solder and that, and it has already been pre-tinned already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna quickly show you the uh, speaker sleeve, sorry, the wire sleeving that I do have, which is a really, really good thing from Roads and Mails. Basically, what it is, is it's for uh, when you're doing speakers and uh, connecting speaker wires. And obviously, you don't want your two wires touching because obviously that will fuse your engine out. And uh, you'll end up with like a blown chip. So I can re highly recommend going to road mails and buying this stuff. And it's uh, it shrink wire uh, wire shrink I think it's called, and it goes onto the wire and then it stops the wires from touching. So I'm just going to cut a bit of that to go on that wire, and then going to cut it in half again. So about fingers in the way there, to go onto the next bit of wire. So the first bit of wire that I'm going to do, so this brown piece here, I'm just going to quickly slide this on to the end of it. I'll have to just quickly take it out the cro crocodile clip and then slide it down the speaker wire to about there. Then put that back on there. And then what I'll do next is I'm just gonna quickly tin this wire so it makes it easier to solder it. So I'm just gonna get a bit of a tinner, which as you know, if you've seen my videos, uh, I use a uh, not really anything special tinner, just uh, some stuff that I bought from Amazon that seems to do the job pretty well. So I uh, bought some of that and it's pretty decent stuff. Does its job. Uh, you can't argue where uh, it does what it says on the tin, so to speak. So there you go. So just quickly tin this wire up. Uh, sorry if you can't see that very well. Uh, I think I'm going to put the big light on in a second because it is a bit dim, right? So, oh, right, so there you go. So I've tinned the first wire and then basically I'm just going to put the wires together. Uh, so I'm going to put the wires together like so. Make sure they're touching, which they are. I'm just going to get a bit of solder on the wires, obviously on there. And I'm gonna join your wires. And there you go, the wires joined together. And that's a pretty solid uh, fix there. Oh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> right, so I've already got a bit of solder on there now, so I can just go like that and get the solder iron and just join it back up again. And just get rid of that bit on the bottom there. Right. 
then all I have to do is let loose on that and then get the piece of plastic sorry the speaker heat shrink wire which is actually going into this inside the body down here which is not typical for me slide it up put it over and there you go and then just take the lighter to it and there uh, just shrink it on and there you go that's the first wire done and that's both your wires joined together and no chance of them touching so the next thing i'm going to do the black wire so i'm going to do the same again uh sorry about the fingers and hands in the way uh so rolling mails have already obviously i think this may be the way they buy the speakers but it's already pre-tinned for you which is what you want so we're going to get another piece of uh the heat shrink for the wire cut it off so bear with me one second then i'm going to find my next brown wire which is this one here and i'm just going to slide it gently down the wire up oh, need to just quickly twist that up so it doesn't all fray out when i uh slide the heat shrink down the wire so gently slide the heat shrink down the wire like so you know when something goes wrong <laughs> it doesn't want to work for you and then you're like no stop it i'm trying to film here well it's like that <laughs> it's like it's no i'm not working right that one should have done it yep that's it right and then slide it down then obviously put it into my crocodile clip on my helping hands i'm going to quickly tin up this wire so i'm just going to get some tinner on the end of the soldering iron then i'm going to tin the wire up so just tin it up to make it stick better and a lot easier so you bear with me a second there you go so just slightly tin that wire up, I haven't put a lot on there. You don't need a lot, you just need enough to make sure you get good contact on the wire. So I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more on because that was only a really small piece I got on there. So just going to put a little bit more on. Here we go. Right. So there's me wire and there enough tin there. Then I'm going to get me next wire. So now, I'm going to put the wires together, same again as what I did before, so they're both touching each other. There you go, and then I'm just going to get the solder, and I'm just going to join the wires. Here you go. As you can see, oh, <laughs> I did it again. Right, so what I'll do is I find it easier myself. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but I put a bit of solder onto the end of the soldering iron. And I find that a lot easier to do than, uh, than doing it like with the solder. I find it quite difficult doing it that way. And it would help if I had the wire in the right place, of course. Here we go. And that's that wire, that's that wire soldered together. Then easy peasy, just get the heat shrink that I put on the wire before. Pull it up. Let go of the wire with the crocodile clips. As you can see, there's quite a nice uh, solder on there. Slide it up. Oh, we have a little bit of a blob, but that will go on all right. Here you go, slide it up to there. Make sure there's no bare wire spoken through, which there isn't. So as you can see there, the wire is uh, pulled up over the, where there would be any bare wire. And then obviously just get the lighter and gently heat shrink it on. And there you go, and that's, and that's that bit done. So next bit, easy peasy, all I'm going to do is slide that into there. 
I'm going to reattach my chip back into the top of there, like so. Now, to be honest, the wire I think I'm going to leave like hanging as is. It doesn't really need to be like any put any special way. It's it's you know it's not going to be sticking out the window, you know, so to speak. So if I just do that, like that, uh, yeah, I think the wire should be all right there. Uh, I could, I suppose, I could like go as far as to black tack it down here, which I might do actually, just to tidy it up slightly. So before I do it, I'm going to black tack that down there, just to keep it a little bit tidier. So as uh, Road Mills had already said as well, people out there, when you're using black tack, you only need a little bit. Don't overdo it, whatever you do, because if you overdo it with the black tack, and you go to take one of your engines apart you'll end up pulling all the wires out. I can guarantee it. I, I did it myself. I'll admit it. Everybody makes mistakes. And I did it myself when I first started doing the uh, soldering and stuff for Alan. And, you know, I was absolutely mortified what had happened. You know, when I was really, really mortified. But you learn from your mistakes. So there you go. As you can see, where I've cannibalised the inside. Just cut it out so the speaker will fit in here and give more room for the chip there at the front. Then basically just drop it back in again. Now don't forget with 125, when you're putting it in, you've got it, if you look on the front there, I'll just move the camera there. When you're putting the shell back on, you have to slide it under from the front like that. And then, sorry, bear with me, right, under from the front like so and then slide it back in to the back like so. And there you go. And that's uh, the Intercity 125 done uh, and uh, speaker fitted. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off here because you don't wanna see me going up back together. <laughs> I mean, that'll be height of boredom. So what I'll do is I'll quickly switch it over and then I'll get it on the track and then uh, Alan can go through the uh, sounds on it. So. Bye-bye for now, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. Drop. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Uh, Leighton Junior back here again. So, all aboard, and let's uh, hear the engine starting up. So, for the first uh, function, which is F1, which is basically engine start up. So, I'll wait to you, Alan, please. And as you can see, that sounds pretty nice. So the next one I'm going to do is horn number one, driving end only. The next one is horn number two, driving end only. The next one is function four, which is brake release. That one is quite low for the minute, but that can be fixed. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is function six, which is God's whistle. Uh, function seven, the ready to start signal, is very low, but you might be able to hear it. I don't know if you heard that, it's like a little bell. Then the next one is function ten, which is door slam and the rest of the functions only work when the engine's going around but there are like light connections on the inside of the engine i just i've got to read the manual to see how i connect it all up to the uh, chip so i might do a video on that as well just to show how you connect the lights up because this engine does have lights so I, I saw them on the inside there is a connector from the board going through the lights so obviously all it needs is for them to be connected. So uh, there you go guys and uh, I hope you really enjoyed my video. Uh, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, as always to everybody out there, please stay safe, stay well and stay, you know, home and stuff. All right, bye bye for now. Daddy bye.
Thank you.